He reduced the dose of cortisone and he did the operation. And Andrew's got his leg today. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's miracle number two. I mean, that's fantastic. I had to look up and take notice. You know, I am this very left brain, analytical, sceptical person, and I hadn't heard of uh, subconscious mind before. But it was around, you know. It was around. Think where it was around. Sport. That's where we hear about it, isn't it? The subconscious mind. And it was first used in sport at the Olympic Games by East Germany. And that was 1960. And in 1964, it was used by East Germany and Russia at the Olympic Games. By 1968, all the countries who had attended the Olympic Games, their athletes and swimmers, had heard about the new secret weapon, the subconscious mind. And they've started using it. Look at it. Look at it today. Every major athlete, every major swimmer, every major sporting team, they've all got their own sports psychologists, haven't they? In fact, it's all taught at the Institute of Sports. Huh? But I didn't know this back then. Incidentally, quite another thing that, that I didn't know at that stage, did you know that what Andrew was doing with his mind on his leg is today called psychoneuroimmunology. That's what it's called. Psychoneuroimmunology. In other words, what science has done today has proved that we can, with our mind, increase the T4 cell count, which is the fighting cell in the immune system, with guided imagery and visualization. And so all of this is taught for instance, to children in the cancer wards in Sydney that I'm aware of. Right? But you know, it should be taught to everybody. It's so powerful when we can take some action ourselves, tapping into our own inner strength. We can do that. We didn't know about it 25 years ago, but that's what it's called today. Some doctors know about it, some doctors don't know about it because they're not taught about it. 